After a long off season, the moment is finally here. We get to prepare a full cash lineup for week one on DraftKings. And we'll also disclose our favorite GPP plays. And it's coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lee. And I'm Michael Wiley, and we're the Fantasy Football Consultants. Michael, I have been waiting literally seven months for this show to put out a DraftKings Week 1 lineup. I have never looked at a slate as much as I have uh, for for this. But before we do that, I just want to alert all of our folks. We have been really busy this preseason. If you've missed any of the shows, all of these shows links are in the description. We did a deep dive in the key metrics for success. We also looked at week one's main slate by players uh, for both DraftKings and FanDuel. And we did a cash lineup for Yahoo. And I want to take this opportunity to remind you to check out our nine course NFL masterclass series, which gives all the tips and strategies to select the right quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end, and defense in both cash games and GPP play. Guys, we always want to hear from you. So please, uh, well, hit that like button always. Uh, also, share your content, this content with your friends. Send it out uh, and hit that red subscribe button if you're not a member yet. All right, Michael, let's get into it. Let's go to the DraftKings site and prepare a cash lineup. All right, as is tradition on this channel, we like to start at running back because running backs um, return value more than any other position. So if we want to pay up, This is where we would do it at running back. And there are four tantalizing options at the top. We said in our deep dive video that you want to pick one of those four. And the guy that Michael and I have decided after debating it is, well, let's give you this. Our win, our 50-50 win is going to be tailor-made, Michael, as in Jonathan Taylor. Why do we like him? Why do we not like him? As everyone's drafting their season-long leagues, Jonathan Taylor and almost all scoring systems should be the first overall pick. And I want to make the point is this isn't just an average game for Jonathan Taylor. This is a great game script. The highest favorite on the board at eight points is Indianapolis. And he faces a Houston team who they beat in two games, a total 62 to three. (laughs) <laughs> and Jonathan Taylor, look at this. DraftKing points scored 28 and 32 DraftKing points. He absolutely torched Houston uh, last year. This guy's in his prime, 23 years old, great offensive line. Michael, what do you think? I think it's like you say, Taylor made. It's going to be a repeat of last year. He's going to have a good start. Indianapolis wants to come out and show everybody that they can run the ball. Who better to do that against than Houston? Uh, Indianapolis has a shot at the playoffs. They, they got to come out and show what they can do. So no reason to save Taylor. All right. The, the biggest argument against Taylor is his price. He hit it with $9,100, but we're just going to let everybody else kept, got, catch up to us on the production he does. Michael, it probably prevents us from getting two of these top guys. So who are you thinking that we will opt for as our second running back? Well, I mean, look at Joe Mixon. He's $2,000 uh, cheaper than Taylor. He's got a good matchup. Pittsburgh hasn't been as strong against the run at, 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 like they have in years past. Uh, and Mixon, what he was the third in total touches last year, uh, sixth in touches per game. I think uh, uh, he was uh, third tied with the, for third in goal line carries. Uh, and also red zone touchdowns with Taylor and James Conner. They they give him the ball at the goal line. He's getting involved with the passing game a little bit more. Um, no, not the same as these premier guys, but he's $2,000 cheap, cheaper and going up against the defense uh, that I think he can get some points against. And, and the offensive line, as you've said many times, has improved, which should just help him. Yeah, and I think it's an interesting trivia question. He is the only running back or only player at all that got all his team's touchdowns rushes that started inside the five so not only is he the 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 running back that they choose their quarterback joe burrell never is going to snake a a a touchdown uh on the ground so i love that so uh we've got mixon and taylor so do we have to save some money at wide receiver and and we are in debt 
So, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so, yes, uh, we're going to save money at wide receiver, but we are not going to sacrifice in talent. This guy, Michael, may be one of my favorite buys on uh, DraftKings in, in week one. Look how far I'm scrolling. Just close your eyes, everybody. Imagine a guy who's the clear number one wide receiver, and he's in a great game script of a 26 implied total. That is Michael Pittman going up against the Houston Texans. This pick, Michael Pittman, he had a hundred and I think 26 uh, uh, targets, 88 receptions. No one else on the team got more than 40 receptions. And I think he got a clear upgrade at quarterback. I did some research according to pro football focus. Um, they, uh, their previous quarterback, um, Carson Wentz was 29th in accuracy. Matt last year, Matt Ryan last year, eighth in passer accuracy. That's going to help Michael Pittman because 24% of his targets were deemed uncatchable. (laughs) So I think he's going to get a better catch percentage. I know he's going to get the targets. So all in all, for only 5,500, love it. You're going to hear us talk uh, all over the, the all over the place about guys dealing with you know quarterback receiver uh, changes because it's happened all over the league. You just have quarterbacks moving around, uh, quarterbacks retiring or or you know losing uh, their position, uh, and so uh, don't be afraid of that. And I I think I agree with you. It's an upgrade, and I think we have a similar situation with an, a receiver I'd like to talk about. Not much more expensive, but a little bit more expensive. And that's Deontay Johnson uh, from Pittsburgh Steelers Um, uh, up uh, up against um, Cincinnati. Uh, He uh, he's clearly the number one. Juju Smith Schuster is gone, makes it even more of a clear number one. He's had the drops at times, but um, last year was a great year for him. And Ben Roethlisberger being gone. I don't know that that's necessarily a downgrade. We don't know for sure if it's going to be Mitch Trubisky. Uh, it probably is going to be Mitch Trubisky. I'm not sure that that's a, a huge upgrade, but I think Deontay Johnson is still the clear number one in Pittsburgh, Eric. Yeah, he was second in targets, only behind Cooper Cup last year, fifth in receptions, and we get him for only $6,000 in a good matchup. I am on board. Deontay Johnson, welcome to the team. And to finish out our series of number one wide receivers at reasonable prices, uh, this is only at $5,300. Let's get the better part of the crime fighting duo of Bateman and Robbins. All right. All right. That sucks. Okay. But you know what doesn't suck is Rashad Bateman and what I expect his role to be. Keep in mind that Hollywood Brown and his 146 targets are gone off to Arizona. So, and they didn't get anybody to replace him. So this is all going to, this is all going to benefit Rashad Bateman. And he's in a juicy matchup against the New York Jets. Nobody gave up more points last year than the New York Jets. So as you see, they were ranked 30th uh, against the pass. And keep in mind, for sure, Gus Edwards, who was out most of last year, their running back, is not going to play. And it looks like Dobbins, their uh, other running back who was out most of the year, is not going to play. So I think, Michael, they're going to have to rely on the pass. And yes, I know there's there's Mark Andrews, but uh, Bateman's going to be a big part of that as well. Yeah, and he looked really good towards the end of last season. So I, I really like the upside here. Um, so I, I, I like the I like the pick. It makes us as if we're going to talk about tight ends now. You kind of made the argument for Andrews, but look how expensive he is, right? Uh, compared to some of the other options here, and even I'm not sure if we can afford him, but if we could, all the things you just said, the Jets were even more atrocious against tight ends. Um, I think really makes it tempting to go with Andrews. I'm just not sure we can afford him. And there are some options that are down in the 3000. So if you yeah. scroll down a little bit, because we have an average of 4,250 that we That's have right. to spend. 
So we both like Cole Komet quite a bit, even though he's going up against the Niners who have been tough against tight ends. Uh, Cole Komet, no tight end should up have an upgrade as much, significantly as much as Komet will this year. He he really was a, a, a good option for receptions last year. And this is a PPR league uh, for DraftKings. The but you know he he really struggled with getting touchdowns, and part of that was because Jimmy Graham really was the go-to guy for touchdown passes, uh, and he's gone. So I think that he's going to be a big upgrade. I like this price for Cole Komet. Uh, he's not going to be this cheap much longer, in my opinion, because of his touchdown. Uh, you know, because of that upgrade. Yeah, he's being priced based on last year, and you pointed out that Jimmy Graham. But they also lost Allen Robinson. And most importantly, they didn't replace Allen Robinson with any uh, big name. I, and all of the reports out of Chicago is that, that this is going to be Justin Fields' number two target behind Darnell Mooney. And we get him at $3,700. I really like it. I am disappointed that, uh, that we couldn't get Zach Ertz, who I really like as long as he's healthy at 44 hundred dollars but we have to save uh, the the cash and one of the costs of getting the two running backs and i'm okay with that i am okay with that all right so before we go to flex in defense let's talk about quarterback and michael i think of uh depending on how much i want to spend there's kind of three guys that have kind of the same mode it goes from good better best good is trey lance then Jalen Hurts, and then Lamar Jackson as the premium. Uh, they, um, but given our price structure, I think we're going to go right in the middle and go with Jalen Hurts. So what can I say about uh, Jalen Hurts? He's, he's uh, in a very good game environment, uh, 25 implied total. He faces a Detroit defense last year that gave up the second most points of of all teams in the NFL, only behind uh, the Jets. But it was interesting, Michael. It was like a, a very uh, a very popular uh, sitcom out there in uh, Philadelphia last year. It's called It's Always Runny in Philadelphia yeah. because all they did was run the ball. No team attempted fewer pass attempts last year than Philadelphia, which hurt – Jalen uh, in his uh, production. But I think it's going to be a new situation this year. They spent all that money to get A.J. Brown, who's such a huge weapon. Second year for Devontae um, Smith, who's only going to get better and better. And they got a real talented tight end in Dallas Goddard. So um, I think that will uh, stretch uh, the, the defense. And I think that you'll see more passing yards. But let's not kid anybody. Jalen Hurts' true value is in the fact that he runs the ball. And I kind of forgot a little quiz question for everyone, which is ruined because I have Jalen Hurts' name right there on the screen. But guess what quarterback ran for more rushing touchdowns than anyone? I might have thought um, the, the Bills quarterback or the Ravens quarterback. No, it was Jalen Hurts at 10 rushing TDs, and he averaged 56 rushing yards a game. So I'm going to take that and really helping a low floor, which we love in cash games. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Got to save the money. I, I agree Lamar Jackson's better, uh, but I don't know that the floor is is really that much uh, uh, higher in any event. So I really like Jalen Hurts' uh, floor here. All right. So we have a whopping $6,500 left to spend for two positions. So, all right, so we've got a couple of options here at the Flex. I'll tell you what my favorite option is. All right, so one thing we're going to do is we're going to completely punt on the defense. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Um, the Lions. <laughs> so what can I tell you that's great about the Lions defense? They're at home. <laughs> that's and it. They're cheap. And they're cheap. Well, the cheapest, I guess. Uh, yes, they are. They are not cheap. cheap enough, but yeah, I know a lot of people might go, Hey, how can you put uh, the lions defense in your quarterback is going against them. Um, that's fine in cash games to do that. And it's a punt defense. Um, I, if, if Jalen hurts does great and that means the lions do poorly, I'm okay with that. 
All right. So that leaves at Flex four thousand two hundred dollars. Let me just scroll down. Four thousand five hundred. Don't short. Don't short yourself. Oh, four thousand five hundred. Excuse me. Excuse me. One. I may need to use every penny of that. <laughs> so a couple of options which are you know uh, are interesting at four thousand four hundred dollars. Um, I would like to get um Mike Davis in my lineup with some huge caveats, right? We're, we're, we're still well ahead of the first game. So you got to watch the news. And the news is, I'm pretty, I'm sure Gus Edwards is not going to play, but will J.K. Dobbins play? If J.K. Dobbins is out, Mike Davis should get all of uh, most of the running back carries. He should be the RB1. They just signed Chase Edmonds, Michael. Um, I think he will at best be only a pass catching back. He's got to learn the uh, system. So I think for game one, if Dobbins is out, I think we can have a bell cow back at only 4,400. Who happens to be in a tremendous matchup with the Jets? I'm not going to rip the Jets again. I already told you that defense sucks. Um, they gave up the most points last year. Um, what are your thoughts on Mike Davis? Yeah, no, I think you said it. As long as Dobbins is out, uh, Mike Davis, I think, should get the bulk of the carries against a, a poor Jets defense. I think it's a great way to go, but we got to give these folks a few flex options just in case uh, Dobbins does play. But he's doubtful. I think it's pretty likely he will not play. Yeah, so um, if it turns out that Dobbins is in the lineup, is active, please do not start Mike Davis. Um, you're going to have to to pivot. Michael and I both like Kadarius Tony. Um, we he he is coming off a leg injury, but he looks like he's on track to start in this game against Tennessee. Boy, the giant wide receivers have just been a mess, Michael. Um, but I truly believe when healthy, he can perform and he can be, if not the number two back, maybe the number one back, because Kenny Galladay has been just a major disappointment. And we get them at only $4,100. Any thoughts on Tony? Yeah, no, I think this is what we talked about as a nice flip. Uh, and it gives you a few hundred dollars to maybe upgrade that defense a slight amount. Um, so uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good fallback. But let's hope Mike Davis uh, is, uh, is, is the guy. Yeah, so if you do that, you've got uh, everything from the Texans, Steelers, Giants, Jets, Vikings, Bears, and Raiders. So I'll let you guys decide which one that you would like. So that's our cash lineup. Let's talk GPP. If you'd like to see our full GPP lineup that I prepared along with DFS Hub's Rob McLister, click on the link, which we'll put up above. We'll also put the link in the description. Uh, but right now, Michael, why don't you tell us, not a full GPP lineup, but what is your best GPP stack you like for week one on DraftKings? Well, I, you know, we talked a little bit about Michael Pittman and how he's the clear number one. Um, and because of the pricing, really, that's the a big part of the reason I like this pairing so much. Um, I, I, I like the Matt Ryan to Pittman run with running a back, certainly because of they're going to be coming from behind and a clear number one for Houston being Brandon Cooks. So, you know, it saves a lot of money, allows you to go with some upside in some of the other positions. I really like it. I feel like uh, it's a pretty a pretty solid play. If that game has some scoring to it, uh, should should be a lot of points. What do you What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I I like it. I like it also because I think it's a little bit contrarian because I think a lot of people are focused on Jonathan uh, Taylor. So um, avoiding Taylor. It, look, Indianapolis has a great implied total, so they will put points on the board, and it's very possible they end up doing it in in the air. And this could really pay off. I like it. I want to remind you, check out the video on your screen to see uh, the series of shows that we did on DraftKings for deep dives for week one. And we'll also put up, when ready, our week one FanDuel lineup. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.